We begin our adventure on day zero. We awoke from our slumber on a small platform in the middle of the ocean. So I began using my flimsy hook to grapple resources on the water surface. I saw a shark in the water and called it Bruce. Luckily, he didn't seem interested in me for now. I used what I gathered to add foundations to the raft, as well as a wall and a calendar to help out Editor Newbie out in the future. I saw an island close by, so I decided to scavenge it for everything it had, which was mainly just wood. I got back to my raft and made a water purifier and a small grill. This allows me to make fresh water and cook food. I was able to add a few more foundations to my raft before the night came, and Bruce decided to chomp at it, so I grabbed my spear and knocked him off. And I ended the day by making a research table late at night. In the early hours of the next day, I made some storage for my resources. I later on added more foundations to the raft and hooked in more resources, which allowed me to make my first lot of collection nets. Collection nets basically let you get resources that pass by the raft, but you don't have to collect them yourselves, so they're really neat. I took a minute to admire the sunset as it's just so beautiful, but I had to get back to work. So I added more foundations and nets to the raft. Then I made myself a temporary anchor, as an island was coming nearby. Whilst gathering the island's loot, Bruce decided to hate me even more than usual and started attacking me. I wasn't taking this however, so I pulled out my spear and went head to head with him. And of course, I came out victorious. On day 3 I added even more foundations and nets to the raft, which was building up quite nicely I think. I used my paddle to push the raft towards an abandoned ship with some juicy loot, which I took for myself and left it to sink. Then made some wet bricks that I left out to dry. However, it seemed like night was coming quickly so I made myself a lantern for visibility and a shabby little bed for me to skip the nights away. We woke up nice and early on day 4 with a visit from a neighbouring island. I threw my anchor down and quickly made some more storage before I stepped foot on the land and was lucky enough to see my first goat. So cute. Sadly, I couldn't tame him right now, but I'm sure I will someday. I smacked up a few trees for wood until I came across a little trading merchant. I was too busy looking at his trades when a sneaky screecher dropped a massive boulder on my head. Now I wanted to go home. So I made my back to the raft and slept so my head could recover. It was a quiet day for day 5. We placed down another collection net before visiting another island and taking every single piece of loot it had to offer. By the time I was finished, the sky was dark, so I got back to my raft, ripped off the anchor before laying down and catching some sleep. It took several hours of in-game time, but I'm proud to say that we finally finished the collection nets and foundations on day 6, which was a huge achievement for me. I tried deciding what to do with the raft and thought of making a little central shack where I can put my storage boxes inside. I struggled with the design for too long and decided to sleep, hoping that my dreams would give me at least one good idea. Day 7 began by making my first smelter, which was amazing. I used it to smelt some of the loot that I had scavenged from my island visits 
then propped up my storage boxes on the new shack walls. I grabbed the smelted resources and researched each one, building my knowledge enough to learn an advanced water purifier. But before I did, I decided to make myself a sail, which would help boost us towards wherever we want. As well as a streamer to show what direction the wind is going. We then made ourselves the advanced water purifier and replaced my old one, as this can now store 5 cups worth of fresh water. I ended the day by exploring a nearby island and sleeping before I passed out from exhaustion. I explored more of the island on day 8 and had a battle with Bruce whilst trying to loot. He got the upper hand this time as I almost died. I managed to escape and get back to safety on my raft, where I recovered some more health. I gained my confidence back and jumped in, stabbing Bruce two more times before he died. I then grabbed my reward and went back to the raft to make a couple more homes for birds, which will get me food and feathers, as well as a bigger grill, some bricks, and a seat for me to enjoy the view. We saw dolphins on day 9. I forgot these were even added in the game. Unfortunately, we can't stay distracted for too long, as we had some building to do. I began working on the second floor of the raft, just to add some more space for possible crop plots. This took all day, and I slept peacefully with my hammer in my arms. I began day 10 with bloodlust, as I killed a bird that took home on the nest I made. I carried on my life and explored another island, but this time I decided to be nice and leave Bruce to live. I spent the day breaking trees and smacking the ocean floor before I got back to the raft, smelted my newly gathered oars and slept. Days 11 to 14 began by placing down a permanent anchor, now we don't have to rip it off every time. It was finally time for it to come into use, as we saw a big island in the distance. When we got close by, I dropped the anchor and made myself a metal axe and shovel to prepare for what I had in store for me. I took my first few steps on the new island, and a warthog charged straight for me, stabbing me with his big tusks. I decided I didn't want to deal with that, so I made the decision to leave quickly. I carried on building the second floor and put some large crop plots down, to have an onboard source of wood and palm leaves. I then did some raft busy work by smelting some ores and hooking in some more resources before stopping at another island and looting before the day ended. Scavenging carried on in day 15 as we jumped into the deep waters and used our hook to grab some ores and scrap. Bruce once again attacked me but I got the upper hand and eventually killed him. Apparently this time, however, he wasn't the only one who wanted to fight, as a little puffer fish began to chase me, so I had to put him down too. I got back to the safety of my own raft and made a battery while I smelted some vine goo. Once that had finished cooking up, I used that to make some circuit boards, which I then researched both of and decided to sleep. Day 16 began and today is the day we make our receiver and antennas. We took some time to think of the best place for the setup to be and finally settled on one. We checked it for the first time and it actually worked. Let's go. I then made sure the sail was directed towards the checkpoint before sleeping the rest of the night away. We finally reached the structure on day 17, and I wasted no time. I began to climb up the tower, snatching any loot and notes that came into view. 
I eventually made it to the top of the tower, and I found a person? I met Tyler, another survivor who had been camping out here for the whole time. She filled me in on what's going on while I took some of her resources, as well as a new blueprint for a recycler and our next set of coordinates. I said goodbye for now and went back to the raft, where I raised the anchor and had a good night's rest. I checked the new set of coordinates that I got from Tala and I input them into the receiver. While we slowly drifted towards our next location, I decided to frame Bruce's head like a trophy, and officially named him the Bruce Man. I crafted some more storage and placed it down before sleeping for the night. I checked the receiver on day 19, and slowly turned my head to see our next location in view, the cruise, a giant ship that seems to have crashed into an island. I lowered the anchor once we got close and decided to sleep, getting ready for tomorrow's adventure. On day 20 we crept up and ventured on inside the cruise. We picked up a lot of scrap and plastic laying around before we pried open a door and saw our first lurker, little rats that like to jump up and scratch you. I managed to kill it without losing too much health. We opened up the bathroom door and picked up the red key. Before opening another door to grab a gas tank and a note. We made it further into the cruise and found a door that needed the red key, so I unlocked it and went on in. This is where I found a mechanical part and some bolt cutters laying around. I used the bolt cutters to snap open a locker and grab the blue key sitting inside. This key now allowed us to venture upstairs, so we explored the next floor, killing lurkers that got a bit too close. I went around grabbing any mechanical parts laying around, as well as some bullets that were just laying on the bar for some reason. Okay, let's get this mechanical part, and hopefully, yep, alright, let's go, we've got two. I also found a four digit code that allowed me to open up the safe, which had a couple electric wires sitting inside. Hey, okay, what's inside here? It's attacking me, dead. I went back to the basement of the cruise and used the five mechanical parts I had gathered to make a car jack. I then explored around for some more and found a key card just laying flat on the floor. The cruise was pitch black and I had no headlight, so I made the smart decision to go back to the raft and sleep until daytime. We got back to the cruise and carried on our adventure on day 21. We got back to where we were and I used the key card to grab the green key on the desk. I moved further in and found a large object blocking a doorway, so I used the car jack I made to move it out of the way. This allowed me through, but sadly there was nothing of use there. I made my way upstairs once again and used the green key on the master bedroom door, where I saw a large crate next to the bed, as well as a note and a lighter laying there. I looked at everything I had picked up and realised that I could finally make the bomb so I went to the basement and crafted it on the workbench, then made my way to the captain's control door and set the bomb off, causing a huge explosion, shaking the whole cruise. Inside were blueprints to make a steering wheel and engine, 
as well as our next set of coordinates. We had finally completed the cruise. Okay, give me that. New blueprint, let's go. A new note. Oh, new location, Balboa, let's go. I wasted no time and got back to the raft, where I put in the next location on the receiver and slept after the long exploration. I made my first engine and steering wheel the next day. Yeah, okay, nice. Right here? Just saw it's in front of wherever they're at. I tested them out by redirecting the raft directly towards the next checkpoint and fueled up the engine. Turn. We do have a surplus of wood. So... We should be good. And hopefully... How do we turn it on? This worked perfectly. While on our travel, I made some more large crop plots since I began to run out of wood, and I watered the new trees and decided to sleep, dreaming of what Balboa Island had in store for us. I woke up and began to do some raft busy work to prepare for our adventure. I cooked some food, smelted some resources, and collected our net's rewards. An island came upon me, so I took the opportunity to grind some more loot for metal tools and weapons. I woke up on day 24 and there it was, Balboa Island. It was huge. Whilst the raft closed in on the island, I made some more bricks that I left out to dry, as well as a bug net. Yeah, I guess for now. There we go. I anchored down and began to traverse through the water till I reached the land. I took my first few steps and was greeted by wildberry bushes. So, I did some collecting, as these seemed they might be important. I took the day to explore around the unfamiliar scenery, using my parkour skills to jump over a lake of... yellow liquid? And I made it to the relay station and the ranger station. Yellow. This is good. If you lived here, your house is gone. The ranger station had nothing of use as of now, apart from a blueprint for a biofuel refiner, which I snatched up. However, I went up to the relay station and pulled the lever. I wasn't too sure on what it actually did, but till I looked at the monitor and I saw that one out of three relay stations were now active. So, I knew what had to be done, but I was met by a new enemy, the bear. Of course, you can probably tell what a bear is by now, but what I didn't know is that there is something different about this bear. I kept attacking this bear into day 25 almost breaking each piece of weaponry I had available. After hundreds of gruelling blows to the bear's head, it finally dropped dead. It was only until I was looting it up where I realised that there was something different about this one. Raw meat. That's a lot of stuff. Leather. Leather. Mama bear. Oh. I carried on my adventure and got to the drawbridge that stopped me from getting to one of the towers. I picked up the surrounding stones and used all of my strength to throw them directly onto the lever. It was only on my last stone that I eventually hit it and the bridge came tumbling down. I crossed it and made my way to the tower, flipping the lever once again to now see that two out of the three stations were active. I had ventured to land some more on day 26 when I came across a cave-like structure. I went inside and found a blueprint for a machete, as well as a small crate. I used my luck picking skills and picked it up. Okay, this definitely has a machete in. Revealing the machete locked inside, as well as some other rewards. I later used the machete to cut a hole in some strong ivy that had overgrown a tunnel. I chopped my way through to the other side, which is where I found the last station. I made my way up to the long staircase and went to flip the final switch, when I saw another person. I met Johnny, another survivor who had been staying in the station on a flimsy mattress. He talked to me a bit before I got bored and flipped the last switch, and when I looked at the monitor, it displayed a new set of coordinates that I wrote down and took back to the raft. I mean, what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch out our heads. 
we would go down. Let's raise the egg, that's probably what. I steered the ship away from the island and put in our next checkpoint before sleeping for the night. Night. Oh. And that is, let's readjust. There we go. Day 26. And now we. S After the past few days, I felt somewhat lazy on day 27, but I was still ready to do some sort of work. I made myself a recycler and placed it down. That's. Oh, that's it. That's all I did. Night came quickly and I saw something in the distance, thinking it could possibly be Caravan Town, but I didn't get my hopes up too much, so I slept. It turns out that it was Caravan Town. Before I even got off the raft, a screecher decided that it hated me, so I pulled out my bow and took shots at it, shooting one last arrow at its head before it came falling down. I harvested its loot and carried on exploring, picking up any resources stored away or notes that were left on the table. Wait, what's in here? Anything good? Eh, not really. How about here? Okay. Wait, what are these, sir? I don't think I had anything useful, so we should be fine. Grab that. Gimme. A zipline bar, okay. Cross that bridge. Well, that man is angry, but then. Alright, anything here? No, not really. Oh, another goat. I can't take it right now, though. Sad. Night appeared fast, so I camped out in a caravan for the night hoping the Screecher didn't respawn and come for vengeance. The early hours of day 29 came around, and as lightness began to arrive, I carried on my adventure and started by finding all the battery charger parts. I remembered that I needed some explosive powder, and luckily I had some of my crate that I snatched a while back. So, I went back to the raft and grabbed it. Sadly, as I got back to my raft, Bruce decided to be a huge meanie and he ate the platform that held up the engine, and it broke. I am extremely sad. I used the explosive powder to set alight the rocket. Hey yo, where's this going? Oh my god, it just exploded. And upon inspection of the crash site, it left a zipline part and Major Tom. A little toy. I saw a long cable coming out of the water and thought that there could be a part down there at the depths of the ocean. So I took a deep breath and plunged into the water. I kept going further and further using any air pockets I could just to catch my breath before submerging myself once again and finally reaching the bottom. Waiting for me was a blueprint for a metal detector and another zipline part. I then made the dumb choice and thought that it would be fine swimming straight to the top with no air, and as I quickly learned, it almost caused the end of my run. With a lot of distance left to go, it was apparent to me that I was going to maybe drown. The sky was dark and I kept taking damage, but eventually I made it to the top. On day 30 I kept the adventure going. I used the infirmary key to gain access to some healing salve, as well as the mayor's chest key. Alright, let's zipline down to here, and we should be able to zipline to the mayor's house now. Hopefully? Where is it? I took a couple of ziplines to reach the mayor's house, which contained his hat, which I stole for personal use, and his chest. Inside the chest, I took his blueprints and his coordinates for a new checkpoint, before getting back to my raft. I, I should be set to go. Make sure I get the coordinates. Pangaroa. Alright, alright. I think I'm ready to move on. 
This might be a mistake. Ah, no, we're fine. We're fine. As the sun slowly arose, I put down Major Tom next to the receiver so he could be my little co-captain. I also made another engine and put it down, making sure that the foundations next to it were safe, before fueling it up and setting sail towards my next checkpoint. Right, we can input these coordinates and we should be ready to move on. Did I get that right? Oh, 5, 4, okay. 5, 4, there we oh, with we're already there. Let's go. I used what I had gathered and made a metal detector on day 31. This is necessary to find titanium on random islands. I finished the day by making three more crop plots for wood and palm leaves before sleeping early. I woke up right next to Tangaroa on day 32. A giant dome structure with a whole city inside. This looked crazy. I prepped up my food, water and tools for the adventure and made my way inside. So this is Tangaroa and I'm already bugging, okay. D -d hey, get out, it already looks. It's a plantation elevator surface area, okay. Uh, can we open this up? Okay, we can't open that yet. Got a generator part. Okay, is that a, a nut? As we ventured through the sewer-like system, I picked up any generator parts that I came across before we made it to an indoor crane hovering over a bunch of shipment containers. It's in here. Oh, it's this one. I hate. I made my way up the ladder and placed in the generator parts in their right positions, which now enabled me to use the crane. I literally spent almost the rest of the day trying to finish this puzzle. Is that far back? Yeah. Move this. No, stop it. Move this here. Bang. 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 When, on the final hour, I finally finished it. I dropped down the ladder and walked on through the containers to grab myself the water pipe blueprint. That wasn't too bad. I'll take that. A water pipe? Ooh. Okay. I opened up a hatch that I thought would be my way out when a whole load of water came rushing down and knocked me off the ladder. It began to flood the basement area and I had to find a different way out. I think I do this. Oh. Grab this. Any mice and mouse will disappear once you've spoken to them. Luckily I did, and made my way towards another area covered in water, but this time it was covered with electricity. I once again used my parkour abilities and hopped my way around, picking up duct tape laying on the crop plots that I used to fix some of the cables. Okay, three, two, one, run. How many, how many tape am I looking at? I think I went the wrong way, however as I was eventually free from the electricity and began to make my way towards the surface. It was beautiful. I actually wish I could live here. I saw a few robots wandering around and noticed that they had keycards sticking out of their heads, so I did the unethical thing and knocked them out, snatched up their keycards and left the crime scene. I used them to open up the apartment doors and took the elevators up, exploring through the rooms and grabbing any loot tape and vending tokens I could find. Explore. Well, these are fancy bedrooms and fancy apartments. Okay, tape. Nice. Any places? Just give me the duct tape. That's all I need. That's all I came here for. There's... Uh, well, I can get through this, though. Do you have duct tape for me? Oh, duct tape and maybe strawberries. Who's it by? You're not sure. It just throws. This was up until my actual dogs began to bark at nothing, so I had to AFK for a couple minutes to let them know that nothing was there. Once the dogs had settled down, I carried on exploring. This. This is just a. This is an office. Uh, another vending coin? Give me. Tape. 
slice. And I took a small break in between buildings and decided to treat myself to some in-game loot and use the vending machines outside the big blue tower. I bought myself a grand piano for obvious reasons, as well as a backpack for extra storage. I ventured down back into the basement and used all the collected tape on fixing the rest of the cables. Nice. What's this? Electric purifier? Oh, yes. Once that was finished, I went back to the surface and realised that it was now dark, so I camped out in an elevator until I was ready to move on. In the early hours of day 35, I was ready to carry on and made my way towards the big blue tower. I climbed in and out of broken windows and used zip lines to traverse across apartment blocks. Hopefully I can make it. Yeah, we can. Alright, so there should be another broken window here. Yeah, perfect. So line across here, and we should be able to climb the ladder then. I used the ladder on the side of the tower, and it led me to an elevator. Okay, so I think we got the elevator. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll risk it, just in case. Okay, let's go in, and up. Being the curious person that I am, I decided to take it up, and it took me to a room that had a note and a blueprint, as well as a number pad. I slapped in the code and began to feel the whole tower shake. I went out on the ledge to see what was going on and it seemed that the top of the tower had separated and blown off into the water. I decided to scale down the dome and climb the ladder into the tower top. I'm just going to risk it and try and see what's down there. So I assume that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, climb the ladder. And hopefully there's a hole to get it. Yep, let's go. Inside was a blueprint, which I picked up, as well as another survivor, Elaine. Elaine was different, because I didn't like her. She was rude to me. But I guess my character wanted to help everyone, so yeah. I ignored her attempts to talk to me, and grabbed the next coordinates, and abruptly left, making my way back to the comfort of my own raft. I slapped in the new coordinates and raised anchor. I wanted some time to relax, so I put down the grand piano and played a little tune. I ended the big adventure by cooking up some more food and sleeping. I made a new engine on day 36, and I put it down in hopes that the speed of the raft would increase. I of course learned from past mistakes and made sure it was protected. I then made a new machete and quickly checked on the distance to the new checkpoint. It seemed to be closing in fast. I noticed that my axe was almost broken, so I made a new basic axe, and that's when I saw it close by. I was getting way too excited, but night was coming quickly, so I anchored down and slept, ready for tomorrow. I jumped out of bed on day 37 and made my way straight to the top of the building. Okay, so... I'm hoping that this will take us to at least the top. Okay, can I climb up this little crane thing? Oh, I'll grab that. Okay, little parkour skills, not too bad. The building led me to the crane, so I decided to explore that first. And when I got up there, I found a note and a blueprint and a crate, all of which I stole. I went to the peak of the crane and again found another loot crate. Once everything up there was looted, I took a dive and began to explore the demolished bases of the buildings. Fishing? Fishing? Swimming with the fishes. I don't know why I'm down here, but I'm sure there's something important. When my searches came up empty-handed, I thought that I could maneuver myself through the jellyfish when the light turns on, and I definitely could. I went through and searched around to see if I could find anything, which technically I did. An anglerfish began to attack me, so of course I fought back, exchanging devastating hits, but eventually I won. I looted his body and carried on exploring, finding all the spotlight parts around the area. Please let there be parts in here. Oh, okay, no, that was easy. But I just keep quiet. Oh yeah. 
How have I missed all these? What? Oh, get away. Okay, another one. Is that it? I, I don't I don't know how many you're supposed to find. Oh, okay, no. One more. Once all the spotlight parts had been collected, I fixed up the broken spotlight. I went down the tunnel that had been blocked by jellyfish, and that's when I heard it. A huge guttural growl that shook the whole ocean. Roar. I did not know what I was in for. I carried on going further in and found a blueprint and a mother load key. I picked them both up and looked at the map drawn on the wall. I knew from this exactly where to go. I did not know what was going on. I I'm confused. I made my way there and looted up until I got a little too close to the big door and it burst open. There it was, the source of that growl. This was Rhino Shark. A hybrid between, well, a rhino and a shark. It was so big and so scary. I was lost. Or so I thought. I found out that he would charge into pillars and completely demolish them, so I used this to our advantage. He rammed into the pillar, so I grabbed the explosive barrel and placed it in the broken part. Then he charged up once again and rammed into it, causing it to explode and open a hole in the ceiling above. I went up and yet again he began to attack me, so I repeated the process one more time as he opened up a second hole and once again we went inside. This guy just does not give up. Okay, so there's a hole now. Okay, go up. Hopefully he hits this. Yeah. One more please. Oh, did I miss? What? Okay, that's two, that's two, that's two, three, dub. As he took one last charge of the explosive barrel, the building shook and a bright light consumed me. I swam up to catch my breath in the air pocket and went back down to see Rhino Shark was no more. I got his meat and the Rhino Shark trophy, which was so different and honestly so cool. As reward also, I decided to explore the area and found some blueprints as well as a crane key. So of course, after this, we made our way to the crane, moved a couple things and dropped a huge load of debris onto the building. Making a giant crater. I explored inside the damage to see if there was anything it left behind, and surprisingly, it did. We grabbed yet another blueprint and the next set of coordinates, letting us travel to our next chapter, Temperance. I got back to the raft and began the prep phase for the new raft, gathering resources well into the early hours of day 40. I began the building process by smelting and researching titanium. I didn't realise how much I can use it with, but we'll do this later on. I collected some more resources and filled up my inventory with only plastic and wood. Time lapse time. I saw a large island in the distance and I had hopes of a trading merchant, so I stopped on by and traded some of my nice trash cubes. I put the anchor on the new raft and began my next building time lapse. I took a short break from construction to smelt and rest my body for the night. I woke up and learnt all the titanium recipes and made my first wind turbine. This singular build allows me to charge batteries up, so I don't have to throw out any dead ones. Okay, I want to put this down first, just so I can, you know, charge batteries before I go. And then, I guess, I guess I gotta get back to building.
quick sleep intermission. And we're going with this. I picked up some old items from the raft and began relocating them to the new one. There's a grill and... I decided that now was the time to make a better bed. So I did, and it looked so comfy. Can I put the, the cooker here? Who can put the, we'll put the research table here. The smelteries. Well, we'll start by putting the smeltery here. I carried on relocating my items to the new vessel and relaxed for the rest of the night by using up the rest of my fishing bait. I sell everything, but can Come on, there you go. I carried on moving things over to the new raft on day 52, including the calendar and Bruce's head. I thought of a great idea and put it on front of the raft, kinda like a pirate ship. Once that was done, it was time for another long montage of building and destroying the old raft. I settled down and rested my aching body that night and slept peacefully. On day 53, I kept on with relocating my items and almost finished the destruction of the old raft. Alright, so I want to put the antennas down and the receivers again, the receiver. And then maybe the steering wheel up here as well. I'm not entirely sure if it'll work. Yeah, I've got to make sure it works with the receiver first. Yep, steering wheel, sure. The fire physics. Piano's gotta go down, otherwise how are we gonna have entertainment? And of course Major Tom. I then slept for the darkness to leave. I made some more storage boxes on day 54, as I was going to start moving all of my chests over to the new storage area. I ended this productive day by sleeping. I carried on sorting the chests and relocating items before fortifying the floors with some of the metal ingots I had smelted. Okay, I wanna fortify some more foundations before I carry on. I don't, we're not going to be able to do too many, but as long as like the outer rim is secured, then I'm happy. I guess we geez, we had a lot more than I thought, oh my. I thought it was more metal per, but I guess not. Damn, alright, let's go. On day 56, I put down the grass plots to make a little pen for animals, if I ever got any. And also picked up the crop plots to try and find a new place for them. I made some more smelters and placed them down, then spent the night smelting the metal ore for more reinforcements. At the start of day 57, I made and placed a water tank 
which allows me to fill it up with fresh water and have a constant backup. I put down the grill, then in the distance, I saw another island. I jumped in and saw a puffer fish swimming along, so I tried to kill it for its explosive goo. But unfortunately, I got a bit too close and it exploded, surrounding me in a cloud of poisonous gas. I made it to land and decided to trade the fish I caught with the merchant. He offered some coins, so of course I gladly took them. I made a journey back to the raft to pick up the trash cubes I had stored, and traded with the merchant once again for some more fishing bait, hoping that this time I would get tier 2. I need to get back to the raft. Is there any puffer fish down here? Not that I see. I got back to the raft as the sun began to set and spent the rest of the day fishing. Alright, let's see what we can get. I mean, it's the same four fish over and over again, but as long as the trading merchant likes it, then, you know, everybody's happy. I finally finished the raft on day 59, as I fortified more foundations and replaced the crop plots once again. I can't believe how much metal we're wasting on this, but I'm hoping the Bruce can't attack it anymore. I don't want to waste too much scrap or too much... I mean, no, we can get metal. I think scrap's the one that we need to keep. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on how many nails we're using. But I mean, we should be able to keep... Not keep. We should be able to finish this today. Like, we should have enough of... Everything. Okay, maybe not. Now was time to carry on the adventure. I put in the next set of coordinates and set forth to Temperance. Alright, make sure everything's good. Okay, which way is it? Okay, it's to the left. Uh, right, yeah. Okay, it is there. I filled up the water tank and quickly checked out the Rhino Shark trophy. It's so cool. Sadly, I have no space for it right now, so I put it back into storage. As we slowly got closer, I looked out onto the ocean and saw my very first whale. I love this update. The darkness came rolling over, and I thought I saw something in the distance, but I wasn't too sure, so I decided to sleep and check back in the morning. Turns out I was seeing something, as on day 60 I woke up, and took a look. It was all ice. Why ice? I stood by my steering wheel and maneuvered the raft through the ice, getting close enough to the main island before anchoring down. Okay, I gotta try and maneuver this through the raft. Through the raft? Through the ice? What? It's not too hard, it's just I don't want it to get stuck anywhere and not be able to get out. But I think I see that, yeah, that's the mainland. Okay, we're ready. I prepped my weapons and a new net launcher before venturing onto the cold land. I made a big error, however, as when I was tabbing back into the game, I accidentally shot my one and only net canister. I was honestly quite sad, but we had to carry on. I'm so sad. That was my only one. I went up to what looked like a research facility, but the lock was covered up by ice, so I could not get in. I took the nearby snowmobile and sped over the snow, seeing a new enemy in my view, the polar bear. I tried to ram into it, hoping it would kill it, but I was easily mistaken. I hit it with full force and it did nothing. I had to make a quick escape, so I did, and visited the igloo village. This area looks so nice, but once again, I had no way of getting inside, so I got back on my snowmobile and went to visit the observatory instead. Oh, what's this? Can I go in here? Um, maybe? Oh, no. As I inched closer to the door, the floor began to shake and completely crumbled beneath the vehicle, and I came falling through. We made our way through the freezing waters on day 61. until we finally reached a ladder. I climbed up and found myself inside the observatory. I began to scavenge around the area for notes and slowly made my way to the top of the building. 
Another note, I'll take that. Okay, another, how many notes are there in this building? Alright, again, more notes. Uh, I don't know the code for that yet. I'll just leave that. A spear, okay. Another note, why? I saw the massive telescope and used it to see the constellations and how many stars each one had. Okay, we're looking for certain constellations. Oh, okay. So. And input these digits I found into the locker keypad, and it opened up, revealing Celine's key. I left the observatory and hopped back on my snowmobile, and later found out that I can rip out the cables from the towers standing tall throughout the land. I spent a few hours collecting some cables but had a small pest problem, as the polar bears seem to really love these towers. I had to figure out how to lure them away, so I tried something and it worked perfectly. Okay, cut that. I don't know how many I need, maybe like 8 or 9 of them? If possible. Oh no, polar bear. Okay, let's just leave. I looped back around and snatched up the cables, leaving as quick as I could. I went around to every tower, took the cables and then made my way back to the igloo village. I thought that maybe I could use these cables to hook up each house to the generator, so I put my theory to the test and... Okay, so I just need to hook up every house to the generator, and that shouldn't be too hard. I think I just need to replace all the cables that are there. I think I just made a mistake, that's it. It worked. The doors began to slowly open and eventually the main igloo opened up. I made my way inside and explored around, grabbing any resources and vending tokens that I saw. I climbed the stairs and saw a blueprint and a blowtorch laying on the table and it gave me an idea. I took them both and looted up before I left. I got back onto the snowmobile and left to revisit the research facility. Okay, I think we're done here. I don't think I need to be here anymore. I need to go to the research facility. If that's what it even is. I have no idea. I used my no blow torch to melt the ice off the lock and jab my key in, hoping it would work. As the key slowly turned, the massive door started lowering and I made my way in. Nah, this door taking way too long. Please just hurry up. I am called Spell. Whoever... There were many doors I could go through, so I put on my hazmat suit just to be safe and began exploring around. It would have been monopolized by the same people who caused this mess. I saw some monitors with chemical symbols on and I used my massive brain, aka I looked at the posters pinned to the wall, and I input the three atomic numbers that each computer asked me for, and I completed it. Okay, let's have a look. CL. Uh, that should be that. I have no idea if that's right, just keep running. Oh, nine seconds, please. A door opened up and I explored around once again, grabbing any control rods I could get my hands on. I saw a ladder and decided to suit up and go down. It put me into an enclosed area full of gas and a valve. I began to turn the valve but got jumped by several spider creatures and I fought them off one by one before finishing the valve. But then my hazmat suit broke and I began to choke and had to quickly turn around before I died. I healed up a bit before going back down and climbing the ladder on the opposite end. It led me to another room and I collected more control rods before being greeted with another challenge. The lasers. I had to position the mirrors in the right way so it would burn and break the door controls. I did the first room with ease and moved on to the second room, which was a little harder. Hey, what's this? Oh, more lasers, really? Okay. Let's see. This door. Okay, so we just need to slowly move. I finished the lasers by day 63 and moved back up to the main room. Okay, so I, so I assume I go back up here and put the control rods in somehow. 
I have no idea. I, I hope so. I forced in the control rods, but there was an error, so I had to go down to the reactor room and clear out the gas. The reactor room was covered in those spider things, and I was running low on things to hit them with, so this was going to be a challenge. Enough delays, let's do this. I rush in and start fighting them. They hit me, and I hit them all back. But after a few damaging blows, my bow breaks, and now I have no way of attacking them. I began to panic, I just didn't know what to do, so I tried to improvise a plan. I grabbed another hazmat suit and tried to rush in, circling the reactor and trying to turn the valves off without the spiders biting my back. I had to get my timings perfect, otherwise they would be able to hit me. With my health almost at zero and one valve left, I put faith in this last attempt, otherwise this entire video would end. Hurry up please, please hurry up. Okay, last one. Please stop hitting me. Stop hitting me. And finally, with one last rotation, it was finished. All the spiders faded away, the gas drained out, and I was somehow still alive. Okay, let's go. Oh, this is a weird looking place. A bit chilly. Okay, what's this? A note, gimme, bending tokens, and a blueprint. I then went to the next room and released the next person from their cryo chamber. This was Shogo. Shogo thanked me for releasing him by giving me some more blueprints and our ticket to the last chapter in our journey, Utopia. The day had been long and we had many close encounters with death. But before heading back to the raft, I decided to pay another visit to the Igloo village for some well deserved rewards. We're back to the igloo village. I want some bending things. And I'm gonna take some posters and some plants, because I love plants in real life and I'm gonna like it even better in games. Just just give me a, everything. Then it was time to get back to my beloved raft. I tried to take a snowmobile with me on my adventure so I did the best I could and got him onto the raft, but as I slowly moved forward, it seemed to just sink into the void. I, I don't get it. I took a small detour from Utopia and paid a visit to my good merchant friend. I traded with him a little and then went back to the raft so I could smelt up some more ores before sleeping. I woke up to a beautiful sight, as on day 65, we finally reached Utopia. A huge city floating in the water, houses littering the ocean surface, farming plots, and large skyscrapers in the centre. I went to the dirt area and I saw a shovel, so of course I took it, and I looked at the map to see where I had to dig. I dug up some digits and used them on the locked door, opening it up and revealing a blueprint for me to take. I moved on to my next challenge, which was an electric puzzle. I had to scavenge the top of the houses for some electric wires and connect each house to the generator. This was a breeze, or so I thought. All up until I was faced with my next opponent, the hyenas. These hyenas were in packs, and if they caught you, would bite you and drag you away with them. I tried to avoid the enemies the best I could, but that didn't seem to end well, so I went in with a full force attack, slaying one after another. Eventually, the area was cleared and I could carry on with the electric wires and vending token collection into day 66. I spent the morning of day 66 collecting more wires and vending tokens and connecting the houses to the generators. This has taken so long. I think I've got it down. As long as both sides of the, the, the water or the houses, at least both sides are now connected. So I just need to hook them all up to each other, and that's yeah, that's not going to take too long. 
when finally I finished it. I moved on to the next puzzle, which was the water pipes. I had to connect the water pipes a certain way so the water flows through smoothly. This took a while as well, but it was a lot easier at least. I eventually finished it and made my way up to the farming tower, collected a CO2 canister, which I guess would come in handy, and harpooned a large rope towards another building. I used my zipline tool and zoomed up to the building. I grabbed everything inside and then ziplined down to another area where I found a set of keys laying on the floor. Man, I love ziplines. I need to fill my raft with them at some point. I saw a house that had the door chained up and locked and it sounded like people were inside? Who would do this? I used the keys to open a door, which is where I was met with the man who did this. Olaf. Olaf was an angry little man, who locked up these innocent people and took control of the hyenas and other foes. I knew I needed to fight him. Day 67 began by watching Olaf run off, leaving me with a puzzle that kept me confused for a long time. I had to lift up some cogs, but I couldn't figure out how to do it, until a few hours later, and I finally finished the first room. Alright, I don't know if this is the actual way to do it, I assume not, but I'm doing it anyway. I, I, it's been too long. I made my way up to room 2, where once again Olaf was waiting, and started threatening me. Why is this man so mad? I took the rest of the day and even some of the next day to figure this out. Okay, I think I've got it down now. We just need to get a level and then I can jump across. So, two down. Hey, we made it. Okay. Grab the cog and make my way. I placed the cog on the platform and parkoured my way back on day 68 fixing the elevator and taking it up to the next checkpoint. I, I gotta park on my way back. Grab the cog, come on, there we go. And I think I have to put it in the elevator here. Hey, it did. Alright, let's go up. I built my way up using boxes, and that's where I found Olaf standing in his little safe spot, threatening me once again, and he started throwing bombs at me. This guy really needs to be stopped. I tried to figure out how I could fight him, and a plan came to my head. I didn't know if it would work or not, but it was always worth a shot. I ran to one side until Olaf threw his bombs at me, then quickly ran back and grabbed some boxes. I tried stacking the boxes on top of each other, but he kept throwing them at me. I persevered and kept stacking, eventually having enough to bounce my way up to Olaf, but once again, he ran away. What is this guy doing? Of course, I ran after him, and it was a trap. He had the high ground once again and unleashed a pack of hyenas on me. I had to once again climb up, so I began bringing boxes to the center, hoping the hyenas missed every attack on me, but unfortunately, they did not. They got me a few times, so I had to use some healing salves just in case. I eventually had enough boxes that I could jump over the hyenas and onto the bridge where Olaf was waiting. Once I did, he ran off once again like a baby, so I chased him, hoping that this was the last time. I followed him into a dark room where it looked like he had another companion. This was Alpha, some sort of hyena hybrid who had been enhanced somehow. Olaf was fed up with me chasing him so he sent Alpha on us. Alpha kept jumping at me, biting me, and even throwing up acid bombs, but I did not let this stop me. I took every chance I could to attack, swinging my machete at him. Come on, let's go Alpha, me and you. Okay, I just need to avoid the acid, like, acid pits. Right, this is my chance. If I keep jumping, he shouldn't hit me. Okay, oh, 
Oh my god, that was close. That was way too close. The battle was long fought, but eventually, Alpha fell. I was so happy that I was still alive to carry on this adventure, and as reward, I took his meat and his head. I chased Olaf once again, but this time, he was trapped. No way out. He slowly backed up, threatened by me, and he fell out the window? Stupid man. Luckily for me, he got caught in some wiring, so he wasn't finished, but beneath him were some goodies. Blueprints for some titanium tools and a key. So we jumped off the building and freed the village. Cue cutscene. The raft had successfully been beaten, with no deaths or restarts. Thank god. The cutscene ended, and he finally have a civilization. People everywhere, food to be taken, and the best part, Olaf locked up in a cage, just like he should be. I left the village for a bit to catch up on everything we had managed to do, went back to the raft and sorted our loot, as well as smelted some ores we had on us. I then slept once again, knowing that we had finally done it. I'd learnt all the recipes I could on day 69, as it was now time to level up the raft again. Time for another time lapse segment. Let's go. I tore down some of the walls on the last raft to save some resources and began picking stuff up to relocate. Okay, I just need to break some to reserve resources and I'll make a titanium axe while I'm at it. Just to, you know, be more efficient. Okay, so I want to pick up all the antennas and the tree plots, the grass plots as well. And I think... No, there's, there's a lot more that I need to move. But I'm just going to put them in storage for now, and then I should be fine to go. Man, I need to sleep after today. Time to give things their own little place to live for the future. Okay, 
I need to give this thing some sort of a roof. And I think I'm going to do the foundations that you don't see. Or not the foundations, the pillar supports. Because they look quite nice. Sadly, I accidentally broke the wall holding up two chests, and they, along with everything inside, disappeared into the void. Goodbye, trash cubes. Put the calendar up so we can see, and more storage. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a while to move everything over, but I think we've finally done it. Just a bit of late night fortifying as well before I sleep. Day 74 was the day I left Utopia. I put the steering wheel down and tested the engines on the new boat. They worked perfectly. I slowly drifted away from paradise and decided to sleep the night away. A bit of a quiet day today. I began the next day by smelting some more resources. Smelting some copper before the night ends, that's how we do it. Might as well grab the collection nets and make another row. Then put down another row of collection nets so I can collect more resources. I gave homes to some more items on board the raft. Putting some more crop plots down because you know I can't find a place for them ever. And looted a nearby abandoned vessel for its crate. I hope you're having some goodies for me. Eh, guess that's a... That's okay, I guess. Not worth it. I then ended the day by putting down safety railings across the edges of the raft and sleeping peacefully in my bed. Well, I'm thinking, if I have animals on my raft, you know, we need to keep them safe so they don't fall off. Plus, you know, I'm a clumsy human being, so I'm probably going to fall off at some point anyway. I moved the tree plots once again, hopefully for the last time, and began work on the third floor of the raft for the whole day. I'm just hoping I can get these pillars done today. Because there's... I, see, I like them. They work well, but I think they just use too many resources. Like, you could just put one in the center of your building, and it would work perfectly fine. But these just look better, and that's what I want. The day was a day of smelting. I made sure that every ore I had was smelted down, and once I had achieved that, I carried on with the third floor for the rest of the day. Well, you best believe we're smelting some more ores, but I do have to finish my roof. So I guess I'll do that best I can. Oh, it, uh, yeah, now we're, we're running out of wood at some point. That's sad. Ah, oh, damn. I pulled out my net launcher and shot my only possible attempt. I caught it. I finally had my own animal that I could take back to the raft. I couldn't think of a name right now, so I left it blank and took him back to my raft anyway. After my happy day, I ended the night with some peaceful sleep. I put down my recycler and used it, as I needed to get more trash cubes after my fatal disaster. I then spent the rest of the day fortifying more foundations before calling it a night. Man, I'm wasting so much metal on fortifying, but I think it- honestly it should be fine. Like, realistically, once it's done, Bruce ain't gonna be- ain't gonna be attacking my boat. 
Before I slept, however, I thought I could put my new crop plots down at the front of the raft, so I did that. I finally made my first titanium tool, a titanium sword. It looks so cool. I used it to see if I can slaughter a warthog, and it did, easily. I put down the grill on the new ship and did some more work on the raft for the rest of the day. I made a pen once again for the new goat I had and covered the edges of the roof with railings. I called the goat Greg because of Danny Gonzalez reasons and put him in the pen, then covered more of the roof with railings. Gotta make sure that the top area is also protected. And I'm gonna grab you, call you Greg, because I've been watching Danny Gonzalez lately. And there you go, you should be fine. You should be happy there. But I am gonna give some more protection, just in case. I charged up some batteries to have some in reserve and input some past coordinates as I thought I could revisit some places and loot them entirely. I then slept ready for what was coming next. I smelted more resources on day 83, then spent the metal and scrap on fortifying more foundations. This took all day and I ended it by cooking some more food before drifting away into dreams. I surrounded my outer bedroom walls with the heads of my enemies and decided that I could sleep peacefully with them protecting the boat. I put down a new bathtub in my bedroom and took a dip. Day 88 took a while to get into, as I got COVID, so I had to take a short week off. But I began my day by grabbing the trash cubes and making a new fishing rod, as my last one seems to have broke. I went fishing to use up the rest of my bait, and luckily, once I did, we were right next to an island. Alright, let's see what this trade has got. Because I'm, I'm looking for some good trades, none of that weak stuff. I anchored down and bought some more bait from the trader as well as a Hong Kong. Give me some bait. Right? Is this the right one? Yeah. I mean, I'll take that as well. It's bait and... Oh, yo. You best believe I'm taking that. I got back to the raft as night came and slept in my bed. I felt productive on day 89, and I started smelting some more ores for fortification. I put down and used my honk honk for a bit and then went fishing for the rest of the day. Ah, I'm going to be spending hours fishing just so I can get tier 3. But there is some good trades with tier 3, so I'm not too I'm not too bad. I'm not too down about it. We came upon an island by night time and I decided to adventure it tomorrow, so I slept in my bed ready for the next day. I was ready to adventure the island, and on day 90 we stepped foot, which was surprisingly different. It seemed to be an island full of bees and different types of trees. It kind of looks pretty. I traded our tier 2 fish with the merchant and went back to the raft to smelt some more titanium whilst I made another net canister. I saw another animal in the distance, so I rushed up on it and shot my net at it, capturing it. This time, however, we had caught ourselves a llama. As I took this llama back to the raft, I named it Georgiana. I placed Georgiana in the grass plot and got my first bit of wool from her, which went straight into the research table. 
I ended the day by fishing some more before persuading the merchant to give me access to tier 3. He was against the idea, but when I showed him some more fish, he accepted my offer and we can now purchase titanium, a canteen, and best of all, a viking horn. I don't know why I'd need one, but I definitely do. Then, when I was less distracted, I made another recycler so we could make more trash cubes. I finally made a beehive for honey production, but had no idea how it worked, so I just placed it down and left. I went back to the merchant, who I can imagine is getting sick of me at this point, and bought myself some more titanium and metal ore. I found out that you can add wood into the recycler, so I threw in some spare wood that we had before changing the batteries out and sleeping the night away. I began day 92 by looking through the steam guides to see what people were doing and investigating. Hmm. I tapped back in and went to buy some more titanium and smelted it down so we could finally craft what we've always wanted. I, I need this, I need this titanium to cook. Because I'm ready to do something. An electric smelter. I tore down all the previous smelters we had and replaced them with this massive one. Look how big it is, oh my god. Can I even put it down? Okay, yeah, uh, it works. Let's see. Oh, it's so nice. I checked the bee house on day 93 and saw nothing. Bees, of course, need flowers. So I put down a small crop plot next to the bee house and filled it with flowers. I went to visit the merchant and bought out all of his titanium before coming home and smelting it all. I checked in on the flowers and these damn birds ate them all. I checked the steam guides and later found out that wool is the best thing I can use for recyclers. So I made a scarecrow and placed it next to the plot, hoping it would help. I waited for the last trash cube to drop out on day 94 and made our last purchase from the merchant. Whilst travelling across the ocean, I smelted my purchased ores and chopped down some trees to keep the recyclers stocked up. I made some more titanium tools, even though I probably won't use them too much, and set sail towards Balboa Island for a second time before sleeping for the night. We set in sail once again, because I want to I wanna go somewhere. There we go, and bed then. I woke up and had my weekly bath on day 95 getting all nice and clean. We found another island with a merchant, so I traded some more metal and scrap when we found another llama. I directed back to the raft to make another net canister to snatch it up, but had to sleep as it was getting too dark. On day 96, we ascended the mountain to capture our new llama. And with a successful shot, we called him Boofy. I'm gonna call you Boofy. That seems like a great name for a llama. I dropped Boofy into the grass plot and began using the scrap and metal to fortify more foundations. The beehive was finally working, and I used the honey I got from it to make our first lot of biofuel. As that was doing its thing, Balboa Island came upon us extremely fast, but so was nighttime. So I went to change the electric smelter's batteries and slept. We spent the majority of day 97 exploring Balboa Island once again, farming some more bees and honeycomb, as well as meat from the bears and some more dirt from the cave. Hey, time to loot you up for your meat. Thank you very much, sir. Grab some bees. Die, 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 please. Thank you. Ah, once again, passing the yellow stuff. Commit. Commit. Give me your meat. Die. Die. Thank you. How many bears are on this island? Oh my god. I mean, I'm not complaining, but... Just, like... I mean, I'll grab some dirt while I'm here. Why not?
After several hours, I got back to the raft and gathered some more wool from the llamas before calling it a night. Today we did something slightly different, as on day 98 I crafted a paint mill. I didn't even think about painting my raft, but now was a great time to start. I grabbed the flowers we had on board and put them into the mill, which used water power to violently spin the flowers into paint. I got the paint from the mill and used it to start making the storage floor white, but I underestimated how much paint I would need. By a lot. Okay, so this uses quite a lot of paint. I don't think I'm going to finish it at all. But I mean, it looks nice. It looks very nice. I'm liking it a lot. I'm glad I did this. So I placed down some more crop plots and put all the flower colours in, watering them and adding another scarecrow since my last one decided to leave. There we go. Get me another scarecrow because my last one decided to just dip on me. I don't know why. I don't know if you got eight or something, but there we go. Okay, bedtime. Day 99. We are so close. I started the day by crafting some string lights to make the raft feel more like home. That was until I saw Greg trying to jump off. Why do you do this? Oh, the string lights are going to look so nice on the raft. Look at them. Put some here. There we go. And on the opposite side too. It's all about symmetry. Come on. Come on. Please. Oh. There we go. I decided to once again relocate the tree crop plots. I just can't find a space for them. Beefy, what? You're not Beefy, you're Greg. Greg, what are you doing? Come on, don't, don't jump off. Stay safe. I put him back in his plot and decided that I want to set up some decorations for tomorrow. So I made some and placed them on the roof. Maybe a couple of fireworks celebrations for tomorrow. Ah, oh, it's exciting. I can't believe it's been this, like, it's been quite quick, but long at the same time. Paint them different colours so they go blue in the sky. I painted some more of the foundations white, but again, I ran out of paint very quickly. So I harvested more flowers before sleeping. Day 100 was finally here. We stopped the engines as somehow we landed right next to a merchant's island, so it was time to trade some more. Before trading however, I decided to do a quick bit of painting. Painting some more foundations... You can paint the stairs, what? I prepped my trash cubes and milled some more flowers before running up on the merchant, offering my goods. He seemed very interested in my trash cubes, so I traded all of his titanium and some metal ore which I then smelted back on the raft for the night. This is a smart idea, trust me. Oh, okay, it's not an idea. No, stop. Okay, it's not a smart idea. Can I kill you? I can't... Yeah. I brought Greg up to the roof so he can join the celebrations, but first I had to plant more flowers and water them. As the sky became darker and darker, I set off the fireworks and watched the beautiful lights in the sky explode. Just me, Boofy, Georgiana and Greg, setting sail along the open ocean. Oh, they look so nice. Oh, they just disappeared, okay. Well, let's set more off. Day 100, we finally did it. I think this is the perfect way to end it as well. I hope the animals are enjoying this. I hope they're not scared. Let's go. Day 100. I enjoyed my time with what I had built and was proud of all of my progress. And I settled down to sleep for one last night. So there we have it, 100 days of Raft Hardcore. And boy, was it a wild ride. We faced some challenging and deadly situations, but we came out even stronger as a result. I'm grateful to have spent this time with my amazing companions on board the Raft and I really hope you all enjoyed following along with our journey. Making this video took a lot of time and effort, so please consider liking and subscribing to show your support, as it really does make the biggest difference. In the meantime, 
stay hydrated, and I'll see you all in the next one. My name is Newbie, and have a great day.